Kathy Tony Jones from Channel 9 News. Now that's an endorsement and a half. How about that? And even more endorsement coming, one from an Aussie legend himself, John Aloisi, giving us a thumbs up. John Aloisi from the Red Team. And uh, the Melbourne Victory. Now. Definitely the Blue Team against the mighty Liverpool at the MCG. And Phil came all the way from Liverpool on a jet plane and parked itself right at the MCG. And from all reports I hear, it was uh, a night that most people won't forget. Simo, you went there in, in, oh, in physically, you went no. there, but in spirit, Simo was there mm -hmm. with me and uh, my, my brother and my dad and my son Austin, of course. But there was a huge contingent of the Warrnambool community there at the games. Plenty of reds. Ishu Panga from Zimbabwe, half of Zimbabwe, barred from Liverpool because they had the, the uh, legendary Bruce Grobler who played for the Liverpool team in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, when they were the IT team. Uh, so uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of people from Zimbabwe there, but with my friend Ish travelling with me, uh, went a night, the MCG, 95,000 people, and uh, see what I got into some singing. You got into some singing now. We all know Mr. Del Rey is a bit of a musician, but we're going to have uh, a quick look at some footage. Here he goes. Yeah, listen, don't, don't take note of the voice too much, but it was mostly an atmosphere. And it was certainly a feeling of 95,000 voices all singing at once. The legendary, uh, you never walk alone. Jerry and his pacemakers will never walk alone. Let's listen to the great man. Truth be told, you probably weren't the worst one there. Oh, probably <laughs> That's saying something, folks. I've seen a lot of it, but uh, just the passion that uh, Liverpool's football club have in uh, bringing the game to all corners of the world. I'm from Peru, mm -hmm. and Liverpool were my team back when I was a child back there because they were doing fantastic things in the, in, the, in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Legendary club, and I was so yeah. fortunate to, to be there uh, at the G. So, uh, Carlos Del Rio here, just with introduction. Simon Morgan, we are uh, a bit we're excited. What's happening in football this week? We are, week? we are. Tony Jones. Tony Jones, what a legend. John Aloisi. John Aloisi as well, give us a thumbs up. Belvedere. Belvedere. Who remembers Belvedere from the old Good Morning Australia with Bert Newton? <laughs> Belvedere was there as well. He's giving us a wind up now because we're going to keep going. Well, yeah. having bit, um, we'll just give you a bit of a background of what happens at the at the Carlos and Simo show here yes. at the Wrap. As you can here. see, it's a big production. You can see all the cameras and the crowds. Hey guys, thanks for being a good audience. Everyone's wearing red at the moment. Yeah. Over there, so great. just to support, of course, the fact that Liverpool were here yeah. in Melbourne, but we are here in Warrnambool now. We're going to be talking football, Warrnambool style. Warrnambool football, Warrnambool district football. What it is. We're back with junior football, for starters. There was a game at Scott's Creek. It was. And there was a game at Hamilton Raiders as well. And let's talk quickly about the Scott's Creek game between the Scott's Creek Lions versus the Mera Stingray. Simo, an interesting thing I saw oh. that you don't know about, but uh, I want to tell you that they've got a mascot. No. The Scott's Creek the Lions Scott's Creek have, a have a mascot. They've got this oh. red dog. Red dog. That they've shaved most of his body except for the mane. Okay. And he's that is the he's the Scots Creek lion. I saw the mane from my own eyes. There was a little dog there and poor little thing. It was a cold night. Cold, cold, cold Sunday as well. But what a fantastic thing for the, the kids to bring out their little mascot to the game. That's gorgeous. The Scots that Creek is, lion. That's awesome. That would make that that sort of made my day while I was up there. Uh, wow, excellent. Uh, and uh, the Scots Creek Lions obviously um, <clears throat> welcome the uh, under 15s Mera Stingrays who showed up with 10 players. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sickness to society so around and, and uh, unavailability for other commitments for players. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were able to put 10. We arrived at Scots Creek right on the dot 11.30. Uh, they gave us a few minutes to get changed and get organised. Thank you for that, Scots Creek Lions. And uh, the game got underway with uh, Ronnie. 
our friend Ronnie. Okay. Ronnie, the referee over there. Okay. Uh, Putting on another hat. Yep, yeah, uh, with uh, Johnson, Johnson Matthew there, the coach of the Scots Creek Lions, uh, taking a uh, hold of the team. However, it was the Stingrays who uh, ended okay. up winners in this game. Uh, final score 11 to 1. Um, Seth Hume scored a goal for the, the, the Lions. <coughs> uh, Seth actually played a very uh, strong game there, showing leadership with his under 15 yeah. squad. Um, but also to note, into Scotts Creek, Michael Britton, Matthew Hardy, and obviously Seth Hume named them the best for that team. Um, it was, I'd like to say that uh, it wasn't one sided, but it was one sided for, for the majority of it. But the important thing that I took out of it and I left the, the, the Lions know about is that the kids are improving game by game. They actually were playing some really good football. Uh, they were unlucky not to actually have hit the lead a lot earlier when uh, um, we had, they had a few opportunities. Cameron Jennings was playing in goals for us in the Stingrays. He's a uh, legendary. Legendary um, keeper already at the age group, yes. Yeah, doubling up from his uh, stint uh, at the MCG. Yeah, well. the MCG. We've got some footage here at the MCG. You might just be able to see Cameron who ran onto the middle of the MCG with, uh, in front of 95,000 people there representing uh, his club uh, and also being, uh, being lucky enough to be um, pulled out of a, 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 as a special guest of the Melbourne victory for this particular uh, encounter. So, but Cameron. Not only a great follower of football, a great player as well. Played really well in goals. Second half, he came out of goals and scored two goals oh, as well. Wow. So well, well done to Cameron there. Um, but yeah, listen, in goals, he stopped uh, Matthew Hardy a couple of times. He stopped Seth Hume. So the Lions were actually attacking. Mm. Well, and awesome. moving the ball uh, quite well. Quite well. Um, and there's certainly potential and there is a future there. So keep going, kids. Uh, for the Stingrays, the scorers were Kane Ackerley. You can keep reading that. Uh, Gabbat Silly, um, Patrick Douglas, mm -hmm. is it? Al Malik, Levi Gaddick, uh, Cameron Jennings, um, two, as well as Levi Gaddick. Uh, Darcy Johnston picking up a hat trick. Yeah. That's, fine, that's, it, that's his second hat trick in two weeks, so congratulations, yeah. Darcy. Never yeah. in the best yeah. there, Simon. Gabbat yeah, Silly, <laughs> Levi Gaddick, and uh, Darcy Johnston. Uh, named among the best for the uh, winners. The winners. Well done to and those boys. Um, and also the girls. We had some girls playing as well. Mm. Uh, the next game, Hamilton Raiders versus Jenny Flat Rangers. Now, yes. uh, Jenny Flat Rangers, unfortunately, were depleted. Mm. Side, they could only um, come there with a, a minimum number of players. Yeah. So they did play a scratch match. We're just getting confirmation of the correct score. And Simo, you put the, the name of the score is here at this time uh, when I receive it. But uh, uh, normally it goes to, it went to a 9-0 uh, score towards Hamilton Raiders. Okay. Uh, but confirmation of the final score will be uh, provided uh, in writing mm -hmm. here. However, and there's goal scorers as well. Like I said, it was a scratch match, usually a forfeit for the rules. Mm. It stands that you get a 3 0 uh, scoreline unless the other games had a better goal scoring um, percentage, if you like, because it's not, it's not worth uh, disadvantaging a team that doesn't get to play yep. for a forfeit. Mm. So in this case, the Stingrays won 11 1, so normally it would be a 10 0 forfeit to the Raiders, but because they played, I think it might be a non deal something was worked out, so there will be scorers uh, on the team. Um, so that means that uh, Hamilton Raiders and Mero Stingrays on six points, with uh, Jenny Flat and Scotts Creek Lions on zero at the moment. But it's the start of the season, so a lot of games left, yep. um, but uh, yeah, it's getting very interesting now. Yeah? Well, next week will be a good, uh, good uh, Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, top two, Hamilton versus uh, Mero. Yes. <coughs> the Steam Rise here at Harris Street Reserve. There are actually two games at Harris Street Reserve, so we'll be using both grounds. Uh, the Jane Flight Rangers are hosting at uh, the Scots Creek Mines. Oh, good game also. So, yeah, that, that will be a close game too. Mm -hmm. So, looking forward to 115 soccer next week, Simo. You know? Yeah. Always fun to watch. Always fun to mm. watch. Absolutely. It was a game between Jenny Flight Rangers sitting on top of the ladder in the senior competition against 
third place than the Hawks, yes. who are looking to grab a little bit more than third. Mm -hmm. uh, on paper, it was coming in this uh, the clash of the round. Yeah, absolutely. I believe so. Um, certainly, uh, top three teams playing in that game. Simo, you were at the game. I was. You knew what the action was going on. Yeah. Uh, give us a little bit of a. Uh, yeah. No. I, um, I'm not playing in this particular fixture. I'm still a bit, uh, still a little bit poor with the uh, with the shoulder, so um, ran a line uh, and uh, took in uh, pretty much all of the match. It was a very uh, tight fixture. Thunderhawks really did come to town and really, um, you know, brought it to the Jetty Flat Rangers, and um, there was for a bit of time, sort of in the first sort of five ten minutes, it was very tight. Um, but as always, the Jetty Flat Rangers defence has been pretty rock solid, and the final score was the uh, was the uh, point case. But despite the final score, it probably isn't a true reflection of how well um, the Thunderhawks played. I think what let them down, Carlos, was perhaps their uh, lack of opportunities up front when they were pressing up. There didn't really seem to be anyone up there. Gill um, <coughs> played an absolutely fantastic game. Um, Playing a sort of holding, sort of attacking midfield sort of role, waiting for his place to come, but they never really did, or as quick as what he perhaps wanted them to. And uh, the, the defence was able to sort of uh, sort itself out, led by um, Lee Hunter, as well as having Vic Cameron, uh, Rob Bevan, Angelo Van den Heuvel, sort of playing that back four that's been so solid this year, um, as well as um, Mike Johns um, playing. This match for a little bit, and um, he didn't look out of place. Okay. Yeah, so he played a, a pretty, a pretty solid game when he um, was, you know, in the mix. Uh, but um, yeah, the final score line six one to the Jetty Flight Rangers. Um, again, avoiding uh, managing the Thunderhawks, managing to give Jetty Flight a dirty sheet. Sounds a bit weird, but um, yeah, still only managed one clean sheet this year at Jetty Flat. So, uh, scorers in the game, Michael Romans picked up two goals, uh, both in the second half. Uh, Jason Sutton, a hat-trick hero, uh, two goals in the first half and then just finishing it up in the last uh, five minutes of play. Ellen Lyons picking up a goal as well in the tenth minute. Uh, and for the Thunder Hawks, uh, their lone goal came through Deadly Dan, essentially in the 73rd minute. Uh, a couple of yellows as well, Rob Bevan and Victor Cameron and the best on ground, Stevie Shields, Jason Sutton, Ellen Wines, and for the Thunderhawks, the usual suspects in Paul or Gil Malabar, um, Dan Sedgley, and Captain David Yates. Mm, I think too that it, uh, the Thunderhawks have had suffered a few injuries concerned in the game. I think uh, from some of the, the reports that I got, the goalkeeper in particular. Yes. Yeah, what yeah. happened to Corey? Is it, uh, I've always heard that he was, very uh, brave. he was very brave coming out. He's coming actually out. come up with a, a fairly uh, decent injury as well. So, uh, I haven't heard what the injury is, but uh, <clears throat> he played, he did, uh, I think it was in the second half of memory. Um, managed to keep going for a little bit longer, but I think it just sort of finally got the better of him. And I think it might have been Keith or Hartley. Right. Stepped in. And Stepped in a bit earlier, coming in here, because yeah, uh, apparently it was a, a cockix, mm. which is uh, the bottom part of your, your spine there. Apparently he's had some kind of uh, uh, some kind of mm. injury to that, which isn't mm. isn't good. But obviously goalkeepers are very brave to have to come out. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't heard who, who the players were. I know that from the scoreline, Corey must have been pretty busy, uh, sort of having the attacking from the, mm. the Jetty Flat Rangers who actually come out and. I know, so great defending by the Thunderhawks. And um, I think Jetty Flat may have been uh, <coughs> perhaps keeping themselves because they probably could have put more on the board. But um, the Thunderhawks really stood up and really, really tried to defend that goal. Yeah. Keep it to a low score, and I think Jetty Flat were really wanting to, wanting to win, yeah. considering this when these teams played uh, Thunder Hawks. So, so if they, they lose, uh, if they lose Corey for next next week mm -hmm. or for further around, it might be uh, it might be quite critical for the Hawks because they, they they rely on the, on the, on Corey a bit. Corey is a, a debut player for the season for the league, yes. uh, and he's kind of leaps and bounds coming from a hockey background. One of these guys who are brave. Uh, coming at the ball and he's, uh, he's, he's pretty handy 
I think um, most games that he's played, he's been able to keep his team in it yeah. for, for a long time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure of any other injuries for you else? Uh, not, not that I can remember okay. on the top I haven't heard of anything yeah. else, but I did hear. I'm sure I'll have something down the bottom. But yeah, so. listen, just uh, I had a, a couple of messages that the Hawks were uh, a little bit undermanned from some from the pressure from your, you boys, you boys keep putting on it, uh, but they were a bit disappointed that the, the goalkeeper was, uh, was uh, taking him off the park and had to retire it uh, maybe a little bit earlier uh, than normal. However, uh, Stan Branch, referee of this game, obviously had the cards down for uh, making sure that uh, he, everything was under control, yes. and I'm sure it would have been. Uh, congratulations to Ellen Vine scoring in the 10th minute. It's about, yeah, I saw you just before, and I thought, yep, yeah, don't let the boys get all the action. No. <laughs> Put your name out there as well, but 10th yeah. uh, minute goal. Yeah, I opened it up, opened the account, so yeah. captain leading by example. Very good. Second game. Mm. I'll talk about this one. Yes. Uh, Scots Creek Lions were hosting Mera Stingrays. The Stingrays were showing up with 11 players. Uh, Simo? Finally got 11 on the field. Got 11 on the field, which is a good Real sign. Uh, just to let you know, the Stingrays is four years. Mm. Since round seven, it read W, L, 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 L. So, we've had four, actually, your mind, this was our fifth L last week. We were looking to get something out of it. So our form was pretty average. Mm. Scotch Creek Lions. Wow. Same amount of points as us, 10 points. They were on a bit up. of a high or on the up. Mm. Well, not so much of a high, I guess, because they were playing they played you last week and mm. you guys absolutely mm. creamed them back. Um, it's a little bit different when uh, um, the games get a little bit closer. <coughs> Uh, in terms of the season form, but uh, Mera's team race, first time hit the lead uh, and they kept it. The history between us and the Lions had been that we, the first game was a 3-3 draw. Our second game, we lost it 2-3, leading three goals again, and this time they were able to win it. This is after we were 2-0 up. Mm -hmm. Um, so congratulations to the Scots Creek Lions because they obviously um, stepped up a bit better than the first game. But in, for this game, again, they put the pressure on us and we were able to hit the lead. And um, for once in a long time, luck came into it and luck fell the stingrays way because the Lions were unlucky in a couple of uh, opportunities that fell their way, in particular in the second half. Um, but in the same token, my boys, we welcome back uh, Alex Shiggy, welcome back mm -hmm. Nigel Gray. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing left back, Austin Del Rio was playing right back. So our four um, back was probably on paper, finally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We made a gamble and we played um, <clears throat> Jed Boyle up front, and I think it was a good move. Jed has been at me all week. Yep. Push him up front, push him yep. up front. I've been putting him in the arts of training and... Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. and he's also been, um, um, you know, uh, he's more of a defender in my eyes, but he certainly proved himself as a, as a, a not a bad target up mm -hmm. front either. But, um, yeah, so Sammy Blackburn playing in the attacking midfield, they got the goals going in the 25th minute. Uh, and then it was 1-0 at the half. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. No. Scott's Creek Lions, you put three passes all the time, so we weren't we were comfortable <laughs> at all. Uh, we played some good soccer, but so were they. Uh, Simon Gibling, Jamie Norton, Seth Hume, Liam Johnson. Um, up to a point, Bray, Bray uh, Wright was in goals for uh, the, the Lions. He was back in Nantes. So yeah, he's back in. He, he had a bit of an injury in yes. the, the previous game, but he, he stepped up for this game again, but unfortunately, uh, Sammy Blackman scored the ball in the 53rd minute, mm -hmm. sending Bray one way mm -hmm. and then Sammy turned the direction and showed the other way and when he's twisted he's actually done a little bit of uh, damage to his uh, knee again. So he had to come off after Sammy Blackman's second goal in the 53rd. Yeah. The scores were 2-0 at the point. Well, oh sorry, no, it was 3-0 uh, because uh, Tolga Merrick had scored in the 47th minute. Just not, not, not long enough to kick off. Tolga got in the action to give us a 2 0 lead, and then we were 3 0 up. The Lions had to swap a goalkeeper. And they brought in the legendary Scotty Agnew. 
Legendary, Boy. who's Scotty Agnew? Who's this guy? Well, Scotty Agnew was uh, one of the founding members of the. Ah, um, oh, sorry, not a founding member, but he played for the Hopkins Shark. Back, we had three Agnew brothers play for that, that team uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and Scotty was a goalkeeper, and uh, his heroics put their team all the way up to the grand final in the first season. They lost to Hamilton in the grand final, but uh, and then that sort of team dissolved and the players were moved out of town. But these guys, uh, Louis Guyet, uh, James Kinner, um, <coughs> players who are still in the league, um, uh, John Miles, um, Simon Gibley, all these guys were ex Hopkins Sharks. They came from the, the indoor soccer here. Uh, that uh, we're able to put a team together when we went looking when the league was looking for an extra team here in Warrnambool. Uh, anyway, Scotty looked, Scotty actually put the gloves on, and man, what a game did he play! He played an awesome game because we were three 0 up, looking quite comfortable, pushing the ball forward and having shots on balls and, and testing their defence. Uh, who were missing Louis Guy for this game? Oh, so cool. they were they were missing uh, one of the Italian, you know, the they best player them. probably yeah. also the captain. Um, but uh, it's going to have to pull more than probably, I'd say, about eight saves to keep his team in it. Mm -hmm. And in the 75th minute, Simon Gibling put one pass, uh, in the Stingray's goalkeeper, to make it 3 1 with uh, 15 minutes to go. And uh, those 15 minutes is where the luck came our way. Because Seth Hume ran past our defence once. One on one shot with the keeper, and somehow he, he couldn't quite get his footing right, and we got saved that one. Second time, this time the other youngster, Liam Johnson, who had run past our defence again, Austin Aria was really close to him, but the pace of uh, Liam was too far. Open ball, and he's got too excited, and he's just put it wide, unfortunately. <coughs> and normally, with the luck that the students have been having, they would have been putting top oh, right. Barry. Yeah, Forget about it. Every other game we've had, we've had, uh, we've dominated games and then two goals down um, with those opportunities. And uh, like I said, luck was on certainly our side. Luck was not in the Lions' side, which is a bit of a shame, but not so much a shame for my team. However, that result made uh, fourth spot a real battle now. Well, you've got a little bit of breathing We've space. had a little bit of breathing space in Stingrays. The uh, Lions are still in it. Um, uh, just quickly go through the bests for that game. Best were Adam Holmes, Liam Johnson and Jamie Norton for the Lions. And uh, Danny Pizzaglo must have had a pretty good game. Danielle Pizzaglo had a great yep. game. Thank you, Danielle. She's, uh, she's going over since for the next uh, few weeks and we'll be missing her. Um, but uh, also... Nigel Gray and uh, Alex Sheedy returning had a uh, whistle here by uh, referee Bill Stewart as the best. Yes, they, they, they played really well the, the two centre backs and Daniel as well. Jamie Norton and Adam Holmes, certainly players that uh, I haven't seen play much. I've seen the names on the sheet being one of the best, but hey, they're good players. Uh, as well as, uh, they call him Clem. Clem. Clem, Alas Clement. Um, <coughs> Mino, he's a French, oh, a Mauritius player from um, from the, the, the Lions, and he is an exceptional player. I certainly um, commend him for all the trouble he does to play for the Lions. Uh, Ron tells me he travels all the way back home to play for the Crickets from uh, Geelong or Melbourne or somewhere oh, else. Awesome. So that's that a great good. dedication. That is. Clem, um, one more game left. And uh, after that, we saw the Deacon Dragons were visiting Hamilton Raiders. Are we going to have an upset? And Deacon Dragons, after that result that happened, may have had a chance well, to were, crawl further up to that they were coming, position. They were coming off a win. They were pumped. They were coming off a win, a very good win. Uh, so they were pumped. Heard that Thunderhawks could pull something out from <coughs> Hamilton. Why can't we? Mm. Well wasn't going to be, unfortunately. Um, as expected, the half-time score, 5-0 for Hamilton. The full-time score, 9-1 for Hamilton. So they were able to salvage something, but it probably wasn't going to be enough, no. unfortunately. 
Um, the uh, only goal for the Deacon Dragons, well, Chris Bowen. Yep. Stepping up and picking up a 55th minute goal for his team. In open play too, so congratulations Chris, oh, wow. uh, that was a good goal uh, uh, here. Uh, the goal scorer is for the winning team for Hamilton, Malcolm Grimmer picking up a brace in the 50th and 58th minute, Anthony Hilton with a 68th minute goal, Peter Hawkinson with a 20 minute, Arabus McCarthy picking up a goal as well in the 40th, uh, uh, Mika. Mika McCarthy picking up an 18th minute goal, Matthew Parfrey with a 28th minute goal, uh, James Taylor getting in on the actual 78th minute goal, and an own goal. As well, from I can't read your handwriting. Caden Hayward, 12 minutes. Fair mm. like Caden. Caden was, oh, yeah. was uh, one of the back four for the Dragons. He had uh, Chris, uh, Liam, Drake, Caden, and Nigel Boyd. I think he was playing in the back line. Uh, the Dragons welcome back the goalkeeper, Cameron Scott. Well, that's, he's been missing for a long time and I'm and, sure they'll be very happy. And they were happy too because uh, Cameron Jennings has been putting out the gloves mm. a couple of times with the Dragons was actually in Scott's Creek playing with his junior team. Mm. So I always commend Cameron for putting his junior team well, as he should, yep. uh, besides the senior commitments. But uh, Campbell Scott couldn't bring out uh, the magic guy at Hamilton. I haven't quite heard how his game went, but um, he's one of the ones that uh, the players to watch at the start of the season before he actually got injured by Hamilton in round three. Yeah, I heard there were, that Deacon did have a, uh, a few outs. Um, Jacob Sargent uh, yep. being one of the. I'm trying to think of the others. Um, yeah. But they were missing a couple of players. I think Brad Adams was out. Uh, Aiden Lyon, I think, was out. Aiden Lyon was out as well. Yeah, so a few yeah, players that could have. Maybe taking it up to uh, Hamilton, but yeah. that's just how uh, it's just how it goes sometimes. So um, Hamilton Hamilton's always going to be a tough task, no matter. And they were able to full strength too. So mm -hmm. congratulations, Hamilton, to be able to keep your yeah, list well, uh, together as well uh, for uh, this uh, late in the season. Um, but uh, yeah, that loss meant that uh, fourth spot was sort of uh, slowly edging and rich for the Dragons. Mm, not totally. Not totally, not they're totally. still in it. They are still in it mathematically, but it's... Two games left, six points in it, they're only four, four points. points behind. Mm, so mm. it's not totally out of the question. No, it isn't. And uh, the way the features are looking at, they, there could be possibly be something going to mm. happen yes. to dislodge that uh, top four. Yes, well next week we may well have the, uh, the league decided. Mm. We've got the top two. We've got Chad, we've got Jenny Flood Rangers. They're going to be playing hosts on a play date. They're going to be hosting the Hamilton Raiders. Mm -hmm. So if the <coughs> Jenny Flood Rangers win it, that's it. They'll uh, they will retain top spot regardless of what happens in the final round, and they'll get a nice little point. I hear. And black bragging rights as well. <laughs> bragging rights, and uh, that's right. Uh, uh, but also congratulations to uh, the uh, Jenny Flood Rangers too for recording their one hundred goal of the season last week. Uh, that was a pretty good milestone for, yeah, yes. for our team in the league. Uh, the only other team that has done something similar has been Hamilton Raiders uh, a few seasons ago. Uh, they put a lot of goals past a lot of teams uh, that season. Um, so congratulations. Still Sorry. doing it now, even. still doing it. Still, still going. There's mm -hmm. still more goals to be kicked. Last two rounds. Um, the goal kickers award, remember, Finishes in the home and away. Yes. That doesn't count in the finals uh, season. So there's uh, the the, the top three come from the Rangers, with uh, Hamilton, I believe, being in the fourth and fifth. The fourth and fifth, I mm. believe. And then, uh, believe it or not, Mero Stewart right, has got someone at the end of top fifth. James Kinner. Nice <coughs> um, um, Yes. On eleven goals, I believe. Uh, let me quickly have a look at that similar but. Uh, the fixtures for next week are yeah. ah, first versus second, yes. third versus fourth, fifth versus sixth. Athens. And that's how it's and, Wow. Uh, the games will actually be played. 
I don't think anyone's traveling. Every, every, so every fixture here. is here in Warnable, including a Friday night game. A Friday night game? <coughs> Who's playing Friday night football? Friday night oh. football. I'm refereeing, so um, <laughs> oh. it's not my team. But oh. I'll be here. I'll be in the call. Oh my god, is it really? No, it's not. Thank you for that. I was thinking it was one versus two. It's not. Deacon Dragons. Oh, sitting on six plus six. Uh, playing Corangamite Lions Friday, 2nd of August, 7 pm kickoff. Hopefully, the ground sort of stands up. Then we have 1 o'clock kickoff Jennifer Rangers versus Hamilton Raiders for the game so of the season. Absolutely. I would say that is the matchup. Uh, See, well, I'm mm. not looking for anything like the last. Uh, the last uh, encounter between these two teams, we want to see a lot of good football. Uh, Hard but fair. But fair, because uh, there will be a lot of eyes in that game, okay. including from officials. Mm. And then at 3 o'clock, Merai Stingrays uh, versus Thunder Hawks. Um, and uh, that will be an interesting one too, because mm. that one could, this, last, this next round could consolidate the top four. It could well do. Yeah, absolutely. Depending on what results, uh, what happens <coughs> results-wise, it could well uh, exactly it right. Could well finish, it could well finish, finish the, season. the season off um, if uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, so now we'll have the we we'll the scenarios. I'm sure what needs to happen, mm. what would uh, teams would like to happen to ensure they've still got a chance, particularly the bottom three. Mm. But uh, I think it's fair to say Thunderbolts. Should be okay. <laughs> oh, in third position, I yes, think, uh, yes. I think so. I think that's just. Oh, I think the Hawks are definitely on third. It's just uh, the top four really get cemented at wow. this week or not. Mm. But uh, in saying that, uh, two rounds of the regular season to go, and then we got finals, yes. including a Friday night final. Okay. Um, in summary, just a, remember, a reminder that uh, there is a week off between the end of home and away and the uh, final series to give each team enough time mm, to go through injuries and go through tactics. Mm. Uh, I think Stephen McDonald will be looking forward to that among many other players. Mm. Mm. Uh, they know who they are. Also remember that uh, all yellow cards uh, were rescinded at the start of this season, so uh, there's only been two bookings so mm. far. Um, but the bookings continue all the way through to the grand finals. So yes. Make sure you do not get um, suspended for any finals actions. Um, just put me out there. Simo. Mm, what a week. What a week. What an absolute week in football. <coughs> and uh, my brain's exploded. Okay. It's, it's, it's just been a week. It's been great to see. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that when it comes to sporting events, when it comes to soccer, when it comes to everything, Melbourne know how to put it on a great we show. We put a great show we know what and we've we got a fantastic venue in the MCG, Absolutely. so um, you never walk alone. Walk on. Walk on. Give us some, some colours. With hope in your heart. Hey, you hey.